Hello there. So today we're gonna make a tahini and nut butter dressing with apple cider vinegar and fig and ginger shavings. There's a bunch of other ingredients in there too, but you'll see them as I go along. And let's talk about the ingredients. So the first thing is a fig. So we're gonna make about this much salad for two people, uh, except I'm the only one who's gonna eat it today. So you just need one fig for two servings. Some ginger, not all of it, maybe half of this. You'll see me cut it out. A uh, couple of cloves, cloves of garlic. Shallot, or just a little bit of shallot. I'm probably gonna take a third of it or something like that. Uh, this, is in, uh, this is tahini dressing. I just put it in a coconut oil thing. It doesn't really make, so it's tahini dressing. Sorry, it's tahini. Some apple cider vinegar. Every ingredient here is um, organic. Some maple syrup, organic maple syrup. Some balsamic vinegar. Sunflower seeds. The trusty almond butter. Now, if you are allergic to almonds or uh, in case you're French, here's French. Uh, if you're allergic to almonds, you can substitute the almond butter for a sunflower seed butter. Just as good. Um, oh, forgot the trusty olive oil. So some olive oil. This is the olive oil that I use. It's a biodynamic organic olive oil from Greece. Some coarse sea salt. Now certainly you can use um, a smooth sea salt, but I like to use this and then you put a little bit in the beginning uh, and maybe uh, you, you, you save it for, for afterwards when you're eating. Carrot, some Parmesan cheese to taste. And uh, avocado, if you're hungry, uh, it's pretty hearty, so I would throw it right on top. Some uh, walnuts and black currants. This is a preference of mine. And uh, yeah, I think we'll begin. I think we got the bulk of the ingredients in, but let's, uh, let's begin. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna slice up the figs or the fig and then throw it into the toaster oven and it'll be done to a nice browning or slight caramelization. Now I'm going to slice up the ginger and grab a plate, throw the figs on there like that. I'm going to slice up the ginger and I'm actually not going to peel it. Um, believe it or not. So I'll just do that. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's not slicing, it's uh, slicing and then kind of chopping. So I'll just do it like this. We'll slice it and then we'll chop it. that. I love to use uh, a German knife as opposed to a Japanese. This brand is called Mustaf. So it's pretty good. So you can see that I'm just slicing it up like that. And take all of that chopped, put it onto the plate. We're gonna take some olive oil. You can't see that. That's what it looks like. Put some olive oil on that, like that. Mix it around a little bit. So that all of it gets coated. Okay, just to check on the oil. You don't want to put too much because then it drowns 
the stuff in it. You just wanna put it enough that it coats it. And then I'm also gonna to toast some garlic in the same plate. So before we begin anything, we're basically toasting these three ingredients. Looks like it needs a little bit more olive oil. Just a tad there. Let's coat it up. And um, to caramelize it, you can put a dab of maple syrup on here. Right? So when it goes into the toaster oven, it's nice and brown and caramelized. So you got all the ingredients on there. Okay. My mouth is already watering. Put that in there. That goes on broil. Now I'm using a toaster oven. It's a small toaster oven. The broil setting sets it at 10 minutes. And, uh, um, you know, your oven may be more. So you'll have to figure out what the best setting is for you. But for my toaster oven, the power is perfect. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh, of the apple cider vinegar and I'm just gonna put some right inside here. And it's gonna be estimated. So that's for two people. That's probably three tablespoons. I think that should be good. Probably a little bit more. It's about three tablespoons, I would say. Um, put this away. Take some maple syrup. Maybe a tablespoon of maple syrup. A little bit dab there. Um, now I'll put some tahini dressing on. And we're just gonna take a dollop of this. About that much. That's like a good heaped tablespoon and a little bit more. I'm gonna take some of the almond butter. The French one. And put a dollop of this on. And a dollop is a heaping tablespoon. I think that should be enough. Uh, maybe a little bit more. So a heaping tablespoon and a half. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Put that over here. Cover this up, that goes in the freezer. So uh, just a, a quick word on the um, walnuts, which will come up later. I could have put the walnuts, sometimes people put the walnuts and toast the walnuts in the toaster oven to give it that caramelized look. Um, it actually kills all the, all the enzymatic activity inside the walnuts. So I don't toast the walnuts. So we'll just take the walnuts out and we'll just put them on the side and these go on afterwards. Mm. The walnuts, when I stored them, I stored them in the freezer. See that? Some balsamic vinegar. This balsamic vinegar um, has some sediment on the bottom. Uh, it's actually it, this it, it it sediments to the towards the bottom. Um, so I need to give it a shake, and then it's a very thick, almost uh, syrupy like liquid. Once you do that. All right, so that's your base ingredient. Now we'll add in the olive oil. And the olive oil I just do by almost estimating. I'm not exactly sure how much I put, if I were to try and guess. That's about how much I put, and I go by consistency. So we just look at the consistency and you can see it's actually quite liquidy, but over time it gets a bit thick and we'll just watch that as it goes along. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna cut up the shallot and I'm gonna miss two more things here. There you go. So let's just slice this up. And put this into the mortar and pestle. And then one, the second garlic clove also goes into the mortar and pestle. There you go. And we will crush this. Oops, there's a little peel in there. Now you could put a little bit of salt in there so that you crush the salt right into the cells of the garlic and the uh, shallot. Oh, it looks like there's a little peel in there still. There you go. And you really mash it down. You don't want large pieces of it. Now the shallot is completely um, optional. You don't really need to put the shallot in there, but I'm just, I just put it in there for a bit more depth of flavor with the garlic. Okay, here we go. So we just take that and put that in there. Completely optional. The salad is actually pretty great without it. And it could be a bit strong, um, but we'll just put that in there in the early part so that it melts and some of the flavors diffuse away. Now I don't, as I mentioned, I just put a little bit of salt there. The bulk of the salt goes in afterwards. And I'll show you that. Okay, so we're done with that part. Now what we're gonna do, just give it a little taste. See if you hit it. And okay. came out pretty good. Tastes delicious. The dressing. A little bit of pepper on there to reduce the acidity. If it's too acid, if it's too acid, that you then you put too much um, vinegar on it, and you can reduce the acidity by adding a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of maple, maple syrup. So the other thing that you don't want to do is um, there's a couple of different ways of stirring it. You don't want to stir it vigorously. What happens if you stir it vigorously is that the olive oil emulsifies and that changes the taste of it completely. So what we do is we just kind of lightly uh, do the stirring and break all the large chunks up of the tahini butter and the nut butter and away you go. All right, so the last piece, or one of the last pieces, is uh, the kale, of course. The kale is already pre-washed. I just like to rip it off its stalk. There's a couple of ways to do this. Kale is one of those very difficult, I don't know, high personalities. They're very springy. They've got a life of their own. They're uh, very difficult to mix, as you'll see. Uh, a lot of people like to massage it, to break down the fibers. I don't do any of that. I just manhandle it like this, uh, without the olive oil. And uh, I just rip it off its stems. You don't want to eat this part, because this part is just not digestible. So a lot of people can't digest kale very easily. It's mostly because uh, they don't have the gut bacteria to digest the tough kale. But generally speaking, you should eat kale, not immediately, but after it's sat in the olive oil or the dressing for uh, a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so, if not longer. You can literally go the uh, overnight. 
that. Cut it up into smaller pieces, chop it up. Um, you can go as small as you want. You don't want to be too big, which happens is if the kale leaves are just too big, they'll uh, act very springy inside the salad and it'll be very difficult to mix it. And you'll see how that... So I think that's the first batch that can go right inside. There you go. I think it's small pieces like this. And since I'm hungry tonight and this is my only... This is my dinner, my entire dinner. I'm gonna fill this up and I'm gonna eat servings that are enough for two people. So if I have guests over, I'll usually make this much and serve it to both of us. But when I'm alone, I serve it to myself. I'm having a little trouble cutting it over here. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Just cut it up. That's a toasted. That looks good. I think there are a couple of smaller leaves here, so we'll just, just finish this off so that it's not left behind. Put that in there. I'm kind of speeding through this so the video isn't so long. There you go. Okay, so let's mix this up. Um, I'm gonna put the uh, the walnuts in here. I'm just gonna give it one crush so the big pieces are broken down like that and mix it up. Yeah, it's the right amount. You see if the if the if the pieces were bigger, then it'd be even more difficult to mix. It's already quite problematic to mix this. Kale is one of those problematic, but ooh, so nutritious vegetables. It's considered a cruciferous vegetable. It's got all the nutrients. I rank it up there with cauliflower. Cauliflower and kale are two of my favorite um, vegetables. They're just full and packed with nutrition and just mix that up like that. Uh, we're gonna keep mixing it. It'll become easier to mix as the kale begins to break down under the weight of the dressing, like that. So now, take the, take the carrot, and I have not peeled the carrot. The reason why I haven't peeled the carrot is because uh, all the vitamins and minerals, a lot of the B vitamins, especially B12, is right on the kale, is right on the carrot. So I'll just do this. I'll just do it here. And you want those B vitamins, as long as it's organic, of course. If it's not organic, then you, you don't want those chemicals inside of you. If it's not organic, you don't want to be eating the carrot in the first place. So organic carrot from organic soil is very healthy. There you go, there you go. All that done. Put that on there. Wow, look at that. Look how gorgeous that looks already. Now let's put this over here, get this out of the way so that we can. Pull this out. Now, take a look at this. Perfectly toasted. You can hear the sizzle right over there. Perfectly toasted. The, the garlic is now nice brown, dark brown. The uh, figs are caramelized. Mm. And that goes right on top. Oh, yes. Perfect. Put that away right in there and now you've got beautiful looking salad here now I choose to put this on because I like to add a little bit more even more depth of flavor um, and that's Parmesan cheese 
Um, so I'll just grate a little bit in there. And it's totally a preference of your own. This is also optional. A nice organic Parmesan cheese. You could also use a goat cheese, which I like. I've done that several times. I actually find goat or and or brie to be quite delicious. So delicious, my mouth is watering. Okay, put that there. And the final, actually, we've got these. These are also kept in the freezer, and that's why they're in this bag for long-term storage. What you don't want happening is you don't want them going bad prematurely in room temperature. So just three black currants on there. You could substitute those for cherries or pomegranate seeds, um, up to your preference, if you can put that together. And then the final thing that we're going to do is we'll just get the avocado going. And I'm just going to use half an avocado because I'm already quite full today. And don't need the entire, entire one. If it was two of us, then yeah, I would use the whole avocado. Put that on there. There you go. Slice it up. And there you have it. Tahini dressing, tahini and nut butter dressing with apple cider vinegar kale salad. Enjoy. Oh, I have to do the customary taste. Okay. Mmm. Perfect. <laughs>